In this video, I will explain to you how the full single sign-on of Awingu works. This is a second video, so it's important that before you start up uh, or before you set up the single sign-on in Awingu, you make sure that the pre-authentication works. So if this is not yet done, please uh, have a look first at the previous video and, and set up your uh, pre-authentication with an external uh, IDP. In this video, I will show you how you can remove that last Windows password and have full uh, single sign-on. Uh, before uh, we start with the explaining uh, how to set it up, just a little bit uh, explanation on how things work uh, under the hood. So as you probably know, um, uh, Awingo uses uh, SAML or OpenID Connect to do the user authentication. And this is based on tokens. So on the moment that uh, the external IDP says that uh, it's okay to log in. It will give you a token, and with that token, you can log in to uh, Awingu. But that token cannot be used to connect to a Windows Active Directory or to a Windows application server. Uh, basically, the only ways you can authenticate inside Windows without installing any third-party software is either username, password, or via smart cards. Uh, and this is actually what Awingu will do. Uh, username and password is unknown because the, the SAML token or the OpenID token also doesn't contain the, the password. So the only way we can still log in without having to ask anything to the user is via a smart card. Um, what will Awingu do? Awingu will generate on the virtual appliance itself a virtual smart card, put in that virtual smart card a user certificate, and then that user certificate will be used to do the Windows logon uh, service. Some other things uh, inside the authentication, like the, the network level authentication and uh, the access to the, to the storage, uh, will be done via Kerberos. So also uh, tickets, uh, uh, not, not based on the SAML or OpenID tickets, but uh, based on a certificate. Um, to have this working, uh, Awingu needs to become a sub CA of your Active Directory. So before we can enable the single sign-on in Awingu, we need to uh, configure your Windows backend uh, to have Awingu as an external or as a sub CA uh, authority. And that sub CA authority needs to be authorized to, to generate user-based certificates that are allowed to log in to the Windows uh, backend. Um, please have a look in the uh, admin guide. We have a, a section on that, on, on how to do that uh, in detail. I'm just going to guide you through some of the, the, the steps uh, during this uh, video. Yeah. Um, the, the first thing you need to do is, of course, create that SUBSEA certificate. So to do that, you need to make a certificate request. So that's a, a few lines of, uh, of, of template uh, code. And then once you have those, uh, once you have made that template, you need to uh, register it in your, um, uh, you, actually, you need to uh, uh, use your uh, CA to, to generate that uh, SUBSEA certificate. So um, it's explained in the admin guide, but basically with the CERTREC uh, tool, uh, you, you can uh, generate a request file and then you can submit that request file to get a real uh, SUBSEA certificate. So this is step one, uh, generate from that uh, template file a real uh, certificate file. Uh, the second thing we need to do, uh, and this is something I'm, I'm going to, to show you, is we need to import that uh, uh, SUBSEA certificate from Awingu in the intermediate certificate store of your Active Directory. So uh, this is something uh, you can do via the CERTLM tool uh, in, uh, in Windows. Uh, go to the uh, Intermediate Certificate Authority Store and uh, upload uh, or import that uh, uh, Awingu SUBSEA certificate in there. So this is uh, the first thing you need to do generate the SUBSEA certificate and import it into your Active Directory um, uh, certificate uh, store. Um, the second thing that needs to happen is uh, you need to configure our, uh, your Windows backend that that SUBSEA certificate is authorized to do uh, Windows logons. So for doing that, um, it's uh, a few other commands you, you need to uh, execute. Uh, basically, you need to store uh, that certificate also in the NTO uh, uh, um, uh, entry or in the OT, uh, NTO uh, store of your uh, Active Directory. Yeah. Uh, this can also be done uh, with the CertUtil uh, tool. So have a look in the admin guide for the, uh, for the exact uh, commands uh, to do that. Um, this is something I already have done in, in my case. So uh, if you want to, to check if it's uh, running correct, you, you can run the command CertUtil uh, minus enterprise minus view store NTO. And this will show you all the uh, certificates which are uh, allowed to, uh, to, um, um, to be used in, 
in, in Windows as uh, valid certificates for uh, user-based uh, authentication. So let me uh, let me do this on my system. So as you will see, uh, I'm starting a comment shell. So as you as you will see, uh, I have the Awingu uh, CA which uh, CA certificate which is allowed, and then of course my uh, root CA which was already there. So these uh, these two certificates are, are allowed. Uh, that's it. What you need to do on the Windows uh, backend side. Uh, however, um, the, the full system is based on uh, uh, Kerberos certificates, uh, these kinds of things. So uh, it's important that everything is uh, configured correctly. Um, we have a full uh, checklist of things uh, to, to double check um, uh, before this will work. Uh, one of the things is, for example, DNS. Um, it's important that, for example, uh, your Kerberos cert uh, services are correctly configured. So. Uh, at least the underscore Kerberos TCP and the underscore Kerberos UDP uh, service records need to be there. Yeah. If that's not the case, uh, please uh, create them. Also, uh, both forward lookup and backwards uh, and, and uh, IP lookup need to be correctly configured. So, uh, for example, in, uh, in my case, uh, my uh, active directory, which is called awingu adcomlocal it points to uh, 10704. If I do a reverse lookup of 10704, uh, 10, uh, 10, I also need to have back the, the full uh, qualified correct uh, name. Do the same thing for your uh, application server. So uh, I'm, I will show you later on to do a, a single sign-on to, uh, to this backend system. Also over there, please make sure that both your forward lookup and your backward lookup uh, uh, DNS is correctly configured. Also in Awingu, in your system settings, uh, in domains, uh, uh, please make sure that uh, on one hand, uh, if, you, if you take a look at your uh, domain settings, that you have uh, your fully qualified domain name of, uh, set over here for your Active Directory. So don't put uh, an IP address, put your fully qualified uh, domain name. Uh, it must be over LDAP-S, so that's another thing which is, uh, which is important, which needs to be in place. And um, the DNS server of the Awingu appliance itself, so the, the one which is, uh, which is visible in, uh, in connectivity, uh, that one also needs to be able to do the reverse uh, IP lookups of your uh, system. So don't put uh, a public DNS server like the, the one from Google, the a.a.a.8 over here, but put your Active Directory in here because Awingo needs to be able to do reverse uh, IP lookups. So uh, it's using that one for, uh, for that. So very important, DNS uh, needs to be uh, set up uh, correct. Uh, a last thing to validate on your uh, on your backend system is uh, your Kerberos certificate. So uh, everything in uh, in Awingu is uh, is uh, based on um, on uh, on Kerberos. Uh, so uh, please make sure that uh, if you go to your uh, um, uh, personal uh, certificates, that there is at least uh, one certificate which has uh, the uh, smart card logon and the KDC authentication. Um, um, intended purposes enabled. So by default, this is not the case. So if this is not yet done, uh, you might need to generate a new certificate also for uh, for for this uh, upfront. Again, if you're not familiar on how to do that, please have a look in the uh, admin guide um, on how to uh, to do that. So these are the things you need to set up on your uh, on your backend. Um, on the Alwingu side, we need to upload uh, first of all that subsea certificate. Uh, but that needs also to contain the private key, uh, because uh, with that private key, we will sign then user certificates, and th those user certificates will then be used to do the, uh, to do the login. So how to extract uh, a certificate with the, the root uh, uh, key? Um, so first of all, we, we will extract the one for the, from the subsea certificate. So to do that, we have to go to the uh, certificates itself and then do a right click on the on the certificate uh, that you have just imported then click on the uh, export and then the the wizard will uh, will help you uh, please make sure that you export it with the uh, with the private key uh, you can keep uh, all the rest uh, as uh, as standard uh, and then um, you need to put a password on it so um, let's put uh, a password on it and then finally if you click on uh, on, on the location it will store the it will store the, the file in a uh, uh, PFX uh, format. So this is uh, how to extract the, the subsea certificate, which we will need on the Awingo appliance. Uh, we also need the full root uh, of all the, um, uh, the uh, certificates in the, in, in the, in the chain, uh, which were used to sign it. So if I take a look at my subsea certificate, you see there is only uh, one, uh, one uh, CA involved. So this is the, the CA of the Active Directory itself. So we need that, uh, that certificate also uh, 
uh, on the uh, Awingo appliance. Of course, we don't need the, the private key. We just need the, the public uh, certificate. But that's also something we need to export. So uh, for that, go to your uh, trusted root certificates and uh, find your uh, your uh, certificate, which was used to, to sign the Subsea certificate, and then do the same thing, uh, export. Uh, this case, uh, you, you won't be able to... Um, to save it as a, you, you don't need to save it as a as a PF12 uh, of PFX certificate. You can just do a, a simple base 64 um, uh, certificate, and then uh, that will give you the the certificate from uh, from your uh, trusted uh, roots. So these are the two files you need uh, for uh, the Awingu configuration of the single sign-on. Uh, before we can upload those certificates and switch from pre-authentication to single sign-on. Uh, one of the things to uh, validate is that um, the Vault service is enabled in Awingu. So that's a service which is by default not uh, enabled. This is something uh, you still need to do. Uh, the Vault service is, uh, can be found under Global uh, Connectivity. And over there, you can enable the Vault service. So uh, by default, it's uh, disabled. So uh, either you can enable it with an internal key or with a key stored on uh, Azure or on Google. In my case, I'm just going to use the uh, internal key. And then once uh, this is done, uh, we can go back to the uh, user connector and we can uh, in here uh, switch from uh, pre-authentication to single sign-on. So let's uh, do this together. Let's go to uh, single sign-on and then upload the two certificates. So the, the first one is the uh, SubCA certificate uh, with the password I have set to uh, extract it. And then the second certificate is, uh, is the root certificate uh, with the trusted roots. Uh, like this. And then if everything goes well, if I click on uh, apply, the key will be stored in the vault and uh, the single sign-on will be uh, available. So this will take uh, just a few seconds. And then once this is finished, uh, the single sign-on should uh, normally work. So after a few seconds uh, of waiting, you see the uh, certificates are uploaded and we can uh, try if uh, the single sign-on works uh, completely. Uh, just a few things to double check before we uh, continue. Uh, the first thing is um, in your domains, uh, please make sure that uh, you're using the fully qualified domain name of your Active Directory. And this is again important in the, in the Kerberos lookup. So please make sure you don't have an IP address in here, but you have your full uh, qualified domain name of your uh, Active Directory uh, in here. And then the second thing to validate is the um, uh, DNS server of the appliance itself. So the one which is uh, in uh, connectivity. Uh, that should be a DNS server that can resolve or that can do a reverse lookup of your uh, IP addresses. So if you have specified in there, for example, the one from Google, like the 8.8.8.8, that one won't be able to do like a reverse lookup of your uh, private uh, IP addresses. So please make sure that uh, that is also uh, the case. So uh, let's give it a try. So if I uh, log out from, uh, from um, uh, Awingu, uh, I should normally be... Uh, um, able to test this via in private mode. So let's uh, give it a try. So if I go to uh, remoteawingo.com, uh, I'm redirected to Azure. Uh, so this is still the part for the pre-authentication which, which we have configured in the previous uh, uh, video. Uh, I'm now uh, taking my smartphone for the uh, Azure MFA part. So approve, approve my fingerprint. So I'm in, yes. And normally, if everything goes well, we should not see the um, login or the, 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 the page where we're asking for the password, but that has been replaced by a full single sign-on experience. So as you can see, uh, the SSO itself has already been uh, working now. Uh, before we can start an, uh, a remote application or, an, uh, or a desktop, uh, we still need to configure that those uh, application servers are addressed over Kerberos and no longer via NTLM. So um, this is something that uh, needs to be done uh, in the system settings. So system settings, uh, application servers, manage application servers. So in here, by default, um, the authentication protocol is set to NTLM. So we will switch that to uh, Kerberos. Uh, not going to do that only for this one, but also for my second server. So set it to uh, Kerberos. Uh, and then again, it's important that the DNS are set up correct. So as, as previ previously already checked, please make sure that all your systems have both correct forward lookuping and uh, backwards lookup of the DNS names. So if I now click on an application like my full desktop, 
uh, you will see that uh, Awingo will uh, automatically uh, log in and, and don't require any uh, password anymore. So uh, to summarize, uh, this is a, a rather advanced uh, section. So um, Awingu can uh, be configured to work with an external identity provider. So any identity provider which is SAML or OpenID compatible like Azure, ADFS, uh, Google, um, Okta, uh, anything that is uh, SAML or OpenID uh, compatible could be configured in front of Awingu. Uh, to do that, we first need to set up pre-authentication. So this is something which was explained in the previous video. Um, then once this is uh, in place, uh, we can get rid of the of the password, which is uh, still asked in pre-authentication by going to single sign-on. For having single sign-on working, you need to make the Awingu appliance and Subsea certificate authority of your uh, Active Directory. To do that, you need to create a Subsea certificate, uh, install that on the Awingu appliance, make sure that it's uh, trusted by the Active Directory for uh, uh, authentication. And then if everything is correctly configured, like your uh, DNS uh, your, uh, your Kerberos uh, setup, your uh, reverse lookups, all the, if all these things are in place, you can do full single sign-on from uh, in uh, Awingu to a remote app or a full desktop.